All right, what's going on YouTube? I'm back with a different style of video and I just wanted to go over something which I've been asked all the time since I build turbos and people always ask me, is turbo flutter bad? And to be honest, the question is a lot simpler than you think. A lot of people seem to think that turbo flutter is damaging. Uh, it can damage the bearings. It can damage the compressor wheel. Some people even claim it can make the turbo spin backwards, which is obviously completely ludicrous so I've just prepared a couple of points that I want to go through for this video and I also have my little uh, paper holder where I can demonstrate the forces that acted on the bearings and the compressor wheel uh, in the instance of turbo flutter so before we get into the turbo flutter the first thing we have to cover is why do blow off valves and diverter valves exist? So diverter valves are the ones that are used by OEMs. So blow off valves that aren't actually used at all from OEMs. And diverter valves were introduced because of emissions reasons. Uh, it can help with lean burn. And it's also there for noise reduction, which is the main reason they actually invented diverter valves. So it's for noise reduction one and two, it's for emissions. There's no official documentation, as far as I know, on why they were invented. But those are my two reasons from my experience in the turbo trade. That's what I like to think. Because there's there's no real other reason other than noise control and emissions. Because it can help with lean burn, obviously, with partial throttle and stuff like that. It can help with that. Next, we can go on to blow-off valves. Blow-off valves were... Thing that were just really invented by tuners so it's pretty much just to let other people know that you have a turbo so your car makes a noise you look you're like oh he's got a turbo so it's kind of like a it really is more like a fast and furious thing so tuner guys used to do that to let other people know they have turbos people think it sounds cool well some people at least not me um, but yeah some people think it sounds cool and that's why they're on it a blow off valves is pretty silly in my opinion unless you run it as a diverter valve because you're just dumping the air out of your charge system so on most uh, most cases you can't run a car that's been mapped on a diverter valve or no diverter valve even without blow off valve with a blow off valve and the reason for that is all the system uh, discharges the pressurized air in the intercooler piping so once you let off that throttle pedal all of that built up pressure is just going to get pumped out of the intercooler pipe and that's pretty much going to make the car freak out and think oh shit i need to account for all this air that's still going into the engine which has now been dumped out of the intercooler or intercooler piping and the car for that reason injects more fuel so a lot of times when you fit a blow off valve which is a non recirc if you fit one of those in most cases your car is going to run really really rich especially in between shifts or going on boost and letting off partially stuff like that it's not really ideal for any car in my opinion uh, recirc if you want to have the ch noise recirc really is the only way to do it you don't lose any efficiency uh, it can actually be more efficient i have to say it can be more efficient than not running a blow off valve or running a blow off valve but personally it's not for me now i want to cover why not running a blow off valve will actually not put any more strain on your turbo to a point where it can make a difference to your turbo failing or not. So anybody who claims that not running a blow off valve or diverter valve causes your turbo to fail, I want to take a good listen. So we're going to look at our model here. We have a Garrett ball bearing center section, we have a compressor wheel on one end and we have the turbine wheel on the other end. As the exhaust comes in here, it spins the turbine wheel and that in turn spins a compressor wheel which sucks in air so from a physics standpoint you have to imagine this is spinning very quick so there's forces acting upon this compressor wheel one force is the outward force where it wants to pull itself apart because it's spinning and secondly is a force on the intake blades of the of the compressor wheel because you have a pressure build up if you imagine this is now blowing air out into your intercooler piping is pressurized all that pressure has to be kept in by this compressor wheel so whatever boost pressure you're running is held back by these blades which means that even if you let off the throttle and the air has nowhere to go 
the pressure in the system doesn't actually go up any higher, which means that the pressure exerted on these compressor blades stays the exact same. However, there's less force acting upon the wheel because it's now not being driven anymore. So you imagine you're spinning this really quickly, you're on the throttle, you let off, and it will pretty rapidly slow down because there's no exhaust drive. So this will happen whether you run a blow-off valve, no blow-off valve, diverter valve, this will always happen. So the drive slows down and consequently the forces on the compressor that want to make it pull apart because of the rotation also reduce. You still have the pressure force from in the blades which bearing in mind doesn't increase just because you let off the throttle. So for example your car is making 10 psi with this turbo. You have 10 psi acting on these blades and resistance. You letting off the throttle won't make it spike any higher. It will be that 10 psi and then it will drop off. To be honest, as you let off the throttle, the pressure pretty much dumps out immediately because the compressor is not working to compress the air anymore. So you have an immediate pressure drop off and you get that cool noise, which is pretty much just air going through these blades and being chopped up as this compressor wheel is turning, which gives you that choo 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 noise, which obviously I love. Another point I wanted to cover with our bearing system here, what we have to imagine is as this compressor wheel is spinning, it is sucking in air from this side coming in. So it's pulling this air in. But consequently, what happens when it's trying to pull the air in is this wheel actually wants to pull itself forward. That's why. Some turbos will have axial play back and forth, which is usually an indication of the bearing being worn. So it could either be in a ball bearing unit like this, where the cage starts to wear and it will allow some free play back and forth, or it could be in a normal journal or bush bearing turbo, where the thrust bearing, there's a, there's a thrust bearing and a thrust washer, and these two things stop it from moving back and forth. The thrust washer will actually get worn into the thrust bearing which causes that in and out play and you have to remember the force of this shaft wanting to pull itself forward because it's sucking in air remember stays the same whether you don't want to blow off or you do want to blow off what you have to remember is that load is exerted onto the shaft and the compressor wheel and the bearings as the turbo is in use so not running a blow off valve in effect will do no extra load onto your bearings at all. You could argue that not running a blow valve could fatigue the compressor wheel a little more. Nowadays, a lot of people and a lot of turbos use billet compressor wheels, so that's completely a thing of the past. I mean, the fatigue cycles on a piece of billet aluminium is endless. We're not gonna bend the aluminium compressor wheel or break it or anything like that just from not running a blow valve. You'd have to have some serious issues with surge, which a lot of people like to confuse turbo surge and turbo flutter. Surge is actually when the turbo is spinning, actually it's spinning too fast and producing too much air that the engine cannot swallow. So this compressor wheel is working extremely hard against something that is pretty much a blockage where it will make a fluttering sound while you're actually on the throttle. This type of turbo flutter is the one that you need to watch out for. That's the really bad one. Not the one where you lift off the throttle and you actually removing all the load off the system per se. In my opinion and from my scientific understanding not running a blow off valve is not going to do any real damage to your turbo, your bearings, your your turbine shaft or anything of the likes. So really the main reason a lot of turbos fail especially with tuner guys obviously we like to turn our boost up and a lot of these bearing systems are not designed to have the extra thrust load of the shaft trying to pull itself forward. And that's a common failure point actually on, if you look at the standard turbos and the SR20, which is a T28 or a GT2560 journal bearing, it actually uses a 270 degree thrust bearing with a very small thrust washer. And if you run those above a certain boost pressure, it will actually eat into the thrust bearing regardless of whether you're on the factory diverter valve or not. It doesn't really make a difference. So as long as your thrust bearing system and your thrust load is under control, you don't have a problem whatsoever. Even if you don't have it under control, your turbo is going to fail regardless of whether you're on a blow off valve or not, if you have it at a raised boost pressure, for example. But say 
This turbo is rated at 30 PSI. You can run 30 PSI or a certain amount of shaft RPM, which in this case will be 150,000. And this cage will be perfectly fine whether you run a blow off valve or not. Now, if the turbo is surging, that will be a problem. But a diverter valve or a blow off valve would not help with that. Really, what you need for something like that is a anti surge housing. But I think that's something we can leave for another video. I just wanted to give you my opinion on why I think Turbo Flutter does not have any influence on turbo life, longevity, doesn't cause any harm. So that's just my opinion. As a professional working in this trade for over five years now, personally not running a blow off valve on any of my vehicles, and believe me, taking the turbo out of my Nissan is a pain in the ass. So if it really caused damage, I wouldn't want to run that on my car, despite how good it sounds. If you enjoyed, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. I'm going to leave a little thing somewhere up there. Make sure you click that subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel. If there's anything else you want to know about turbos or engines, even though I'm not an engine expert, mainly turbos, do leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. If you think different than me, you're more than happy to leave a comment more than happy you're more than welcome to leave a comment I mean and let me know what you think maybe you can persuade me otherwise but from a physics standpoint it makes absolutely no sense as to why this will be under any more strain just because you don't run a vent for the compressor doesn't make any sense at all unless it was working against a fixed resistance all the time where it'll be chattering away as you floor it which will make it blow up anyway so Hope you enjoy that one. Catch you in the next one. Peace.